Siempre en mi mente Pensando en ti todo el día Esperaré en poco tiempo Puedes tener a que pasar si tú Espérame, espérame Esperaré en poco tiempo Espérame, espérame Esperaré en poco tiempo Wait for me, soon I'm a canto If you got me, then I got you. If you stand by me, then I'll stay true. And I got some blessings for you, that's way past due. You just got wait a little bit, uh. You know that you don't even trip, uh. You don't be stressing about how long it take you, yeah. That's how I know you legit, uh. I turn that frown and smile, like you with fashion and style. So versatile, I'm gonna rain rain blessings on you. You just gotta wait a while. Just wait a while. Uh. Esta siempre en mi mente. Espérame, 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 esperaré en poco tiempo. Espérame, 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 esperaré en poco tiempo. Me si bon je va pas pour tout ça que ou fait pour moi yo pas pour yo pas y yo ti moi pas rien. Yo la game na esclavage en bas quand yo te marre. Tant pour on est sauvage yo ti yo pas de jambe la game. Pendant moi sous la terre yo fait vu ta cour rien n'était. Yo blem tomber mourir au lieu que moi te sauver. Yo te 
Está siempre en mi mente, pensando en ti todo el día, estará bien poco tiempo, puedes tener cualquier cosa si tú, espérame, espérame, estará bien poco tiempo, espérame, espérame. Espera bien poco tiempo Espera mi sola esposa Dime por qué estás celosa Cuando llamando a mí orando Y si yo sé Están invitando a ser tus amigos Y traen castigo Pero bendigo Cada vez aún prosigo Cada palabra que yo he predicho Yo hice Incluyendo algunos de tus caprichos Dime si realizas Siento todo lo que sientes Siempre y cuando me tenga en cuenta en mente Sé paciente, espera Está siempre en mi mente Eso no quito todo el día Espera bien poco tiempo Puedes tener cualquier cosa así tú Espérame, espérame Espera bien poco tiempo Espérame, espérame Espera bien poco tiempo All right, Israel. Let's stand and face Jerusalem and send up prayers. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Heavenly Father, in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we come humbly before thee, O Lord, beseeching thee, Father of mercy, beseeching thee of grace, O Lord. We pray, Father, we pray, Father, and we thank thee, O Lord, for choosing us, your children, your people, Father, and making us Israel, Father, your sons and your daughters. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. And we thank you, Father, for waking us up, Father. We thank you for our food and our drink, Father. We ask for forgiveness, Father, for the sins that we commit knowingly and unknowingly, Father. We pray for those that are sick amongst us. We pray for those that are cast down in their minds, Father. For those that are downtrodden, Father, we pray for those that are oppressed, Father. We pray for the women that are with child. We pray for the men. We pray for our leaders, Father, that you will protect them and place a hedge around them and place your angels and encamp them around them, Father. We pray for the destruction of our enemies, Father, and we pray that you will bring your kingdom swiftly and speedily upon the earth, Father, as your will is, Father. We pray, Father, for our food and our drink, Father. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. We thank thee, O Lord. Amen. All right. Are we good? All right. All right. All praise. All praise. All right. Shalom. Most high in Christ. Bless. Happy feast. Happy new moon, Israel. All praise to the most high. You know, if you turned up last night, all praise to the most high. You was in the spirit. You know, if you was at home last night, you got the damn devil on you, man. Um, you know, hey, but there's always another new moon, man. Lord willing. Uh, all praise for mercy. All right. So we're going to get into it. Um, today's class is who controls the black image, all right? Who con uh, controls the black image? Um, we know today that for the most part, as a whole, our people don't really control what the media pushes as far as our people, right? You know, so it begs the question, who actually controls our image, right? Who controls the black image? All right, give me the Google definition of image real quick. All right, read that for me. Image. A representation of the external form of a person or thing in art. This is the representation of the external form of a person or thing, and it says in art. All right, I'll read the second definition. Hope. Oh, excuse me. Yes, yeah, number two. The general impression that a person, organization, or product pre presents to the public. So the general impression that a person, organization, or product presents to the public. Uh, I'm going to read some of these uh, synonyms. So likeness, depiction, 
uh, representation, I believe that's what that says. Uh, what's some other things? Uh, identity, public perception, public conception, public impression, persona, profile, uh, portrayal, depiction. These are things that all correlate with an image, right? So it's important that we control our narrative. All right, you can go ahead and take that down. Let's get Deuteronomy 7 and 6. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Come on. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So the first part about our image is that we are clearly, as defined by God, a special people. Come on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth, meaning we the top G's and top ladies, you know. Because what's the top G without his top lady, right? Uh, or, t or T lady for, the, for them, you know, them, them brothers and sisters that's in the South. I don't know how many people have heard that before. T lady, yes, your top lady. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how many people know that. Uh, read it again. Verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Come on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Come on. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. Come on. For ye were the fewest of all people. But what? But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. Excuse me, bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So the Lord loved us and thought so highly of us, right? that he gave Egypt a ransom for us, right? That tells you how important our image is, right? Give me Genesis 126. This is the book of Genesis, <clears throat> chapter 1 and verse 26. Come on. And God said, let us make man in our image. What man in God's image? The Israelite man. Come on. After our likeness. To be just like God. So he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. To look just like and to be just like who? God. Come on. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea uh -huh. and over the fowl of the air. Come on. And over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And they were supposed to rule over the entire earth. Come on. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. Created he him. Male and female created he them. Right. He created the male and then he created his female from him. Right. So we're made in the image of our God and our women are made in the image of us, their God. All right. Drop that. Give me Exodus 19 and 6. This is the book of uh, Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6. Come on. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. And a holy nation. So part of our image is we're supposed to be a kingdom of kings and priests and a an holy nation. We are supposed to be the example upon the earth. But that's clearly not what we are today, at least in, in, in how the media portrays us and, and how the media blocks any positive image of us getting out. Right. Because that's not the image that they want to portray. Right. Read that again. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Come on. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So he said, these are the words that you should speak unto the children of Israel, showing you that it, in order for you to think, like you ever heard uh, of positive reinforcements? Like for those who have children, the more you reinforce your child positively, the more they will think highly of themselves, like, the more likely they are to have high self-esteem but if you berate your child or or you're a people that's always berated and always told that you're you're less than and you're lower than and you're nothing then you you begin to believe those things that's where you have uh people that have very low self-esteem very low self-worth who has uh lower self-esteem or lower self-worth than the so-called black hispanic and native american man woman and child the israelite so that you understand uh read that again and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Mm -hmm. These are the words which thou shalt speak 
unto the children of Israel. So it's important that we exhort each other and that we, we you know, tell each other just how important we are to each other, to our children, to our wives, to our brothers, to our sisters, to our, our husbands, right? Because the world does not uh, enforce that image to us. They don't tell us. They tell us the, the exact opposite, right? Um, drop that. Give me wisdom of Solomon 13 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 1. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13 and verse 1. Come on. Surely vain are all men by nature uh -huh. who are ignorant of God Come on. and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. All right. Neither, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master. So we know this is going into idolatry, right? We know our people are fully uh, caught up in idol worship today, right? Come on. But deem either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of stars, or the violent water, or the lights of heaven, to be the gods which govern the world. Come on. With whose beauty, if they being delighted so, to... So with whose beauty, meaning their idols, the sun, the moon, the stars, if, if we were so enamored or so captivated about the beauty of these things and took these things to be gods to worship them, come on, excuse me, with those, excuse me, with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, mm -hmm. let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty have created them. So God is the first author of true beauty. That means whatever God set forth as beautiful, you can go ahead and put a stamp of approval on it. You, you bet your bottom dollar it's beautiful. So why is it that the image of the Israelite man and woman and child is less than today? Why is it that if you uh, give a, a five-year-old or a four-year-old um, a, 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 a doll test, they tend to think that the lighter shade or the, uh, the, the white child is beautiful or pretty or good, and the black one is evil and bad and ugly, right? Um, give me Ezekiel 16 and verse 3. I'm going to show you what the author of beauty said about you and your people, what your true image is in God's eyes. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 16 and verse 3. Come on. And say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Reap. Thy birth and thy nativ nativity is of the land of Canaan. Uh -huh. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. Come on. And as for thy nativity, in the day that I was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. So we were in our filth. We were in our filth. We were in our wickedness, right? Come on. None I pitied thee. Nobody pitied us, just like today. Nobody pitied us. Nobody cares about our nation of people. Come on. To do any of these unto thee. Come on. To have compassion upon thee. To have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field. Uh -huh. To the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. Come on. And when I passed by thee. And when God passed by us, come on. And saw thee polluted in thy own blood. And saw us polluted in our own wickedness and our evil and our sins. Come on. I said unto thee. He said unto us. When thou was in thy blood, live. He said, live. He said, when we was in our blood, when we was in our sins, he said, live. He gave us his laws. He breathed life into us. Come on. I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Come on. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Come on. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. Come on. And thou hast increased and waxed great. And we became great. We became mighty. We, we became a nation of kings and priests. Come on. And thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thy hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Come on. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, Behold, thy time was the time of love. Thy time was the time of love. He had compassion on us. He showed us genuine care, genuine love, like any father who loves their children would do, like any mother who loves their children would do. Come on. And I spread my skirt over thee. Come on. And covered thy nakedness. Covered thy nakedness, gave us his laws, read. Yea, I swear to thee. And he sweared to us. And it, Come on. And enter into a covenant and, with thee. And enter into covenant, meaning a promise with us. Come on. Save the Lord God. Read. And thou became his mind. And we became his people. We became his people. His, tre uh, his treasure. His peculiar people. At that. 
to, to show forth his image in the earth, to be like him, to look like him. Come on. Then wash I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. Come on. And I anointed thee with oil. Read. I clothed thee also with broadened work. So he clothed us with broadened work. And showed thee with badger skin. Come on. And I girded thee about with fine linen. Come on. And I covered thee with silk. Royal attire. Royal apparel. Come on. I decked thee also with ornaments. We all know how Jake loved to get down with the jewelry. You, you see Jake on a, on a good feast. As a matter of fact, you come to a Passover. Right? You come to one Passover with Jake. Man, I'm telling you, it's, it's like a red carpet event. You ain't never seen uh, somebody so, so decked out, so clean. So clean. You, you, superstars and millionaires don't look that clean like we do at our feast days. That's how you know the spirit of the Lord is in us. It's in us to be great. It's in us to look glorious and beautiful. It's in us to show forth the praises of the Lord, to show just how much we were made in his likeness after his image. Come on. I deck thee also with ornaments, and I, and I put bracelets upon thy hands Read. and a chain on thy neck. You know we love our chains. Come on. And I put a jewel on thy forehead Read. and earrings in thy ears and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Come on. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver. Thus were we decked with gold and silver. And thy raiment was a fine linen. Come on. And silk and broadened work. Thou didst eat fine flour. We ate good. And honey. And oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful. Read that again. Hold and thou was. And thou was exceeding beautiful. And we were exceeding beautiful. Whatever beautiful is, we were here. Thou were exceeding beautiful. Come on. And thou didst prosper in a kingdom. And we grew into a mighty kingdom. The nations feared before us. Come on. And thou renown went, excuse me, and thou renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. And we were so glorious. We were so beautiful. Our, our reputation spread abroad for how glorious we were, how beautiful we were as a people. At this point, we embodied the image of God. We controlled our narrative. We controlled our image. But what happened? Come on. For it was perfect through my comeliness. It was what? Though it, for it was perfect through my comeliness. It was perfect through God's comeliness because he is what? The first author of beauty. He is the one that dictates what true beauty is. I get annoyed when I hear a sister. I, we, we've been out at camp sometimes, and we're dealing with a sister, and their hatred for the hair is, is insane to the point where you have to almost uh, – you, you have to damn near chastise them. To, nah, don't, don't say that. You, your hair is godly hair. That's the most beautiful hair on the planet. Love your hair. Cherish your hair. You know, deal with your hair. Don't cover it up. Don't, uh, uh, you know, put dog hair on top of it. Don't say it's ugly. Don't say it's nappy. Don't say it's tra That's beautiful. That's godlike hair because it was perfect through God's comeliness because the first author of beauty created you to look that way. If he wanted you to look like a dog, he'd have created you a dog. We cover, our sisters cover up their hair and put dog hair on it in a lace front. And then put gel on the side and weave down the side. And, you know, you see the sisters, we, gonna, we got an image of that too. You see, you see the sisters that had the joints all the way down here with right. the weave? That right. look, that's look great. Oh, man, that joint look trash as hell, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm not talking about the sisters that keep her. Her hair, because I know some of our sisters, you know, they, they put the weave in their hair. I'm not a fan of it, but, you know, we do have sisters that, that do it neatly. But I'm talking about the ratchets. Y'all know who the ratchets is, man, where, you know, the glue so caked on that it looked like dandruff. That's how thick it's caked on them little joints. Uh, read verse 14 again. Verse 14. And thou renown went forth among the heathen Come on. for thy beauty, Read. for it was perfect through my comeliness, uh -huh. which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord Be God. Because he put that beauty upon us. He put his name in us. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 23. Get that for me real quick. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 23. Come on. For God created man to be immortal Come on. and made him to be an image of his own eternity. And made him what? To be an image of his own eternity. He made you and I to be an image of his own mortality, uh, immortality, excuse me, or his own eternity. Meaning you were made to live forever. You weren't made to die. 
You weren't made to have alopecia and uh, what's some other things? Acne, dandruff, uh, what's some, some uh, uh, dark spots, blemishes, moles. That's not your culture. That's not your history. That's not your anything. You were made to look like God. You were made to, to be like God. God don't get pimples. God don't get dark spots. God, God don't get bags under his eyes because he's so dang tired. We fell off. We forsook the image of God, and we went after the images of the nations. Uh, was that it? Read that again. For God created man to be immortal. He made us to be immortal. Come on. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. And made us to be an image of his own eternity. All right? Drop that Jeremiah 2, 21. What happened to us? How did we fall so, so far? How did we become so low and so lightly esteemed in the world to where when the world thinks of beauty or the most beautiful people, they think of a dog. Right. Or they think of a, a, a flat behind, flat chested, boy faced white woman. Come on, man. Read what you got. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 21. Come on. Yet had I planted thee a noble vine. So God planted us a noble vine. We were a noble people. What made us noble? The laws of God. He planted us a noble vine. Come on. Woolly a right seed. A right seed. Come on. How then are thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? How did we become a strange vine, a strange nation to God? How did we become strangers? How does a, a nation of kings and priests, how does a holy nation, a nation that was made to look and be like God become degenerate because we forsook God's laws. We forgot our first love. We, we cast out righteousness and we cleave to wickedness. We wanted to be like the nations in all things. We envied our oppressors and we still envy our oppressors. That's why our, our sisters dyed their hair blonde. That's why I, I was, uh, what was I looking at? Uh, it was uh, about a week ago. Uh, was it the, the Emmys, the Grammys, something like that? I can't remember. Uh, and and Jay Z did his acceptance acceptance speech, and uh, Beyonce went full blown blonde, like she she used to do the honey blonde thing. Now she just had full blown blonde hair. And I said to myself, this this girl ain't got no damn sense. All that talk about her. Uh, what was that song she did? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I can't think. Formation. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like, she did that song where she was talking about how proud she was of her black skin and her black hair. And you put, yeah, at, at that Super Bowl, right? But you went more blonde than the, the honey blonde. The honey blonde is bad. But she went full-blown blonde blonde. You can't make this stuff up. Read that again. For though, excuse me, yet I had planted thee a noble vine. Come on. Holy a right seed. Holy a right seed. How then art thou turned? And to the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me. How are you turned into a degenerate and strange vine to me that created you, that planted you, right? That sets you in a pure land, a land of milk and honey, and gave you laws to govern yourself, to be great by. How did you become so, 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 uh, so low? Uh, drop that. Psalm 82 and 6. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. Come on. I have said, ye are gods, Come on. and all of you are children of the Most High. Come on. But ye shall die like men. So we are gods. We the children of the Most High God. We the sons and daughters of the living God. But you know we die like men because we choose everything outside of what God had placed for us. Like it said, like we just read in, in Jeremiah 2, I planted you a noble vine, holy a right seed. How art thou becoming a, a degenerate and strange plant unto me? How did God's kings and priests go from that to mere mortals, mere men? How do we go from that? Because we forsook God. We forsook our image for uh, dogs and, and people who eat cats and, and dragons and, and anything. Right? Read that again. I have said, ye are gods, Come on. and all of you are children of the Most High. Come on. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Nehemiah 9 and 36. 
So because we sinned against the most high God, now our image is given into the hands of people that don't care anything about us. And they control the image, right? They push the image to the world. Read what you got. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9 and verse 36. Come on. Behold, we are servants this day. And for the land thou gavest us, excuse me, thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. So the land that the Lord gave us, for us and our children, we serve our slave masters, people that are beneath us in that land that God gave us. Come on. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us. Come on. Because of our sins. Because of our what? Because of our sins. Come on. Also, they have dominion over our bodies. What does it mean they have dominions over our bodies? That means they control what goes into our body. They control how long we live. They control what we look like to the world. They control what we look like to the world, meaning our image. Uh, come on. And over our cattle. And over our cattle. At their pleasure. At their what? At their pleasure. At their what? At their pleasure. They have dominion and control over our image at their pleasure. However, they deem whatever they determine is good for our image. They control that at their pleasure. Come on. And we are in great distress. And we're in distress about it because we keep complaining about why, like you hear people, even this year, they were talking about uh, boycotting this and boycotting that. And we boycotting this because there's not enough diversity or it's not enough uh, pushing of a positive black image. But why we, why we got to boycott their stuff? Why don't we just leave their stuff and create our own? Since the, the beauty of the world is determined and based on us. Fashion trends are based on you. Style is based on you. Everything you control. They take your look, your style, your culture. I ain't going to say your culture. Yeah, your culture. And they give it to their people, and they replace it with trash for you to have. And we so, so far gone, and I'm, we don't even realize they stealing everything from us and giving it to their people and then replacing it with trash. And then we call it the culture. This is our image. Twerking, killing our babies, murder, theft, adultery. That's our culture. But their culture is putting their kids through college and, and leaving their children's children an inheritance. These are our practices. This is what our book says we ought to do. So how are other nations doing it better than us? Read that again. Behold, we, we are servants this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers, to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us Come on. because of our sins. Read. Also, they have dominion over our bodies Read. and over our cattle at their pleasure. At their pleasure. And we are in great distress. And our people stress the hell out behind it. We can't get a deal. You, Taraji P. Henson crying because she underpaid as, a, as an actress. But why? Because your image don't mean, don't nobody give a damn about you. Don't nobody care that you've been in the game 20 whatever years. Your image is destroyed. Don't nobody value the black woman but the black man. And guess what? The black woman is the black man's worst enemy today. Because she can't even see that he values her. And when he shows her that he values her, she's the first one to come against him. You can't tell me our people ain't destroyed. You can't tell me we fell for it. We bought into an image that is utterly destructive. Drop that. Uh, Isaiah 42 and 22. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and 22. Come on. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Come on. They are all of them snared in holes, mm -hmm. and they are hid in prison houses. Uh -huh. They are for a prey. They are for what? For a prey. For what? For a prey. Come on. And none delivereth Read. for a spoil, and none saith. Restore. Nobody says restore them to their former glory. You mean to tell me these, uh, out of all, like they can go back and tell you about uh, uh, any, they, they, they got whole, hit the history channel. They can tell you about all kinds of civilizations, but you mean to tell me they can't tell us who we really are? You mean to tell me they can't say 
restore them back to what their former glory was? You mean to tell me they can't educate you properly on who you really are? They don't want to. They don't want to. As a matter of fact, they go out of their way to keep that image hidden for you. This is why if somebody dare gets on that television or on the Internet and says that you are the people of the Bible, they, they got to shut them up, close his mouth. And one day they're going to start killing us for it. Uh, finish that off. Read that again. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They took our land. They took our image. They took our identity. They took our, they take our children. They, till this day, they, uh, we go on uh, missing person and fly bitches, and the, the average age is between 15 and 17 years old, and it is predominantly our daughters, our sisters. And why they take them? But, uh, for, for organ harvesting? For sex slaves? Why? Because they want everything about your image, but they hate you. But they desire everything about you. Come on. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Read. They are all of them snared in holes. We trapped. We fall for the nonsense. Everything they, they give us, we fall for it. And no matter how destructive it, it, it turns out, we keep falling for it. Our people celebrating Mardi Gras. Like, Mar like people come back with, with babies they aborted, killing their children and STDs. And I bet you some, some nigga somewhere said, this is our culture. I guarantee you somebody said, this is the culture. We're doing this for the culture. Right. Death and destruction. Come on. And they are all hid in prison houses. Come on. And they somebody are... probably went to prison that night. And people got murdered of celebrating that stuff. Come on. They are for a prey and none delivereth. For a spoil and then say Nobody delivers us and nobody says restore them people to their former glory. Restore them back to what they were known for. Restore their reputation as the kings and queens and princes and princesses of the earth. The sons and daughters of the nobody says restore them to that. They all conspire to keep you from that image. Come on. And uh, none saith restore. And none saith restore. Jeremiah 2 and 11. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 11. Come on. Have, they, have a nation changed their God? So have the, have, has the white man changed his God? Has the China man changed his God? Has the Arab, the East Indian, the African, have they changed their gods? Do they worship something outside of what their image is? Does a Chinese person worship a black God? Does an Arab person worship a white God? Every other race worships a God that looks like them. Come on. Which are yet no gods. And they not gods. They idols. They don't exist. They have no power. But they got enough sense to have some pride in something that at least pushes an image about them. Come on. But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. But we change our image for something that don't even profit us. We serve a white Jesus that has utterly decimated the black community. And then when you challenge these weak pastors and tell them they destroyed the black community, when you challenge these sisters that go into the church and give their whole paycheck, they get mad at us. They want to beat on us. They want to shoot at us. They want to cuss us out. They want to conspire with the white man against us. When we tell them that worshiping that white Jesus done destroyed your people, destroyed your sons, destroyed your daughters. And they want to come at us and tell us, somebody told us yesterday, can't we worse than the white man? Well, how, we worse than the white man telling our sisters to put on some clothes, dress modestly. We worse than the white man telling our brothers, stop shooting your brother, stop selling drugs to your people. We worse than the white man for telling the black man to man up and take back your image from the white man. We worse than him? I ain't never hung a man a day in my life. I ain't never drug a man with chains from my vehicle a day in my life. I ain't never shot up a school. I ain't never done none of these things. I ain't never had a burning. I ain't never smelled a postcard with me burning. So I ain't never did none of that to nobody. And we worse than the white man. I don't know nobody that ever done that stuff. And we worse than the white man. And this was said by a, a black person, an Israelite man. That dumb stuff was said by one of our own people. Our people stupid as hell. Why? Because we changed our glory to something that don't profit us. We love that white man. We love his image. We love his image. 
We'll die for that man's image. We'll push that man's image. We'll kill our own for that man's image. Read it again. Have a nation changed their gods, Come on. which are yet no gods. Come on. But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, what else? Uh, Black Lives Matter. Don't none of this stuff profit us. It only further destroys us, and we choose that over God. And then when you tell our people, this Bible is about you. Your God look like you. This Bible is only for you. They mad at us. We a hate group. We number three on, on the, 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 the Southern Poverty Law Center. Really? Really? We don't kill nobody. We don't rape nobody. We teach against all of that nonsense. And we the problem. That's how you know they control what's pushed in the media about our image. Drop that. Uh, give me Hosea 3 and 4. This is the book of Hosea, chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king Come on. and without a prince. We used, to, we used to have kings ruling. We used to have mighty kings, right? We would abide many days without a king. Come on. And without a sacrifice. Come on. And without an image. And without a what? Without an image. We don't have an image today. Not a good one. Not a positive one. And you know who craves that image so much? The young men. One of the main things I always get asked is, how, what made you, you, you come into this? What made you join this? How old are you, young man? When they see my sons, like, what, what is this? When they listen to my sons talk, how, what, what, why did he say that? What, what is he talking about? Moses. I remember... Uh, when my oldest son was in, in uh, public school, thank God we pulled him out. But uh, for Black History, for Black History Month, um, they did a, a storyboard, and um, they could pick anybody that they wanted to do it on. And my wife was trying to give him ideas to pick. Like she was naming all kinds of things. Uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and, you know, and uh, he didn't like any of those. And I told my wife, hey, hey, listen, listen, let him pick. Don't pick it for him. Let him pick. And my son, I, I can't remember. I think he might have been seven years old at the time. He's 13 now. But he, uh, when, when I uh, asked him, well, who do you want to do your report on? He said, Moses. That's what he said. Man, I, you know how much time I stayed up? Yeah. Dang, trying to make sure that that was the coldest uh, storyboard he had. I'm talking about I went outside, got a stick carve the giant up so he could walk in the giant with the, the dad's staff, you know, pick one of his best little feast day garments out so he could wear that giant in the classroom. And he had his little storyboard, and he had his little staff, and he had his garment on, he went to school, dressed as Moses, and, and, and did his project on Moses for black history and taught that Moses is a black man because the Bible says it and was proud of that, and he chose that. You know what that does to people? You know what that does to a teacher? And it was a, his teacher was a white lady, too. You know what that does? You know what that tells him? This, this little nigga is different. Who the hell is, who the hell, what the hell is his father and his mama teaching him? He did Moses? He just sat up there for Black History Month and did Moses as a black. Don't he know Moses is white? Don't he know Moses look like me? How dare he teach that Moses look like him? Because Moses looked like him. That's his image. That ain't your image. That don't belong to you. But that's the point. That's the point. That's why it's so important for us to claim our image and, and take it back from the hands of the, our oppressor for our baby's sake, for our sister's sake, for our men's sake. They the ones that need that. That's why they hate this movement so much because the youth flock into it. The women flock into it. The young man is flocking to it. It shows strength. Courage, discipline, things that we grossly lack in the community. Uh, read that again. For the children of Israel shall I buy many days without a king, Come on. and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without a teraphim. All right, so drop that. Give me the breakfast club. Let's get some of these people that, um, that push our image. Saw that uh, eight seconds. Listen to what this damn demon say, man. Go ahead, play it. You're going to 104. I 
I don't know what's this opioid thing, man. Is is well, being a so crackhead wasn't cool would you... back then. Being what? a crackhead wasn't cool. Now it's it, it seems like they're they're making it cool to be drinking lean and syrup and it's the most dangerous. It's the most it's dangerous. Who's making it cool to do lean and and do opioids and smoke crack? Who's making that cool? That, that's a music executive. They're the ones that and who are they making it look cool to? Is it their own? No, it's our people that they pushing it to make. This is why you got Future who don't do drugs. He said I'm a lightweight. And he sitting up here talking about Molly Percocet. This way you got uh uh who's uh some other ones? Dang uh Boosie. B- Lil Boosie. I don't I don't even know if he like big time no more. He kinda just like uh, you know what I'm saying, whatever. But yeah, Lil Bo- whatever. That's who they, they pushing them to make it look cool for our people. That's the image that, that's portrayed in our community. Come on, play it. First thing that's facing um, um, our society. Are you so, so why sign an artist that would promote that? Listen um, to what he be, asked him. Because pause, I, pause, hold on. Go back. He asked him. He said, it's the worst thing facing our society. It's the way he knows that's not good. Watch what he asked him. Um, b- because I, I, I already answered that question. You weren't paying attention. Um, she asked me talent or issues, and I said talent. But I, I, I have to, I, I can't give up on people. Pause, pause it, pause it. He said, he asked him, if it's so destructive, why do you push it? And he says, I already asked that question because if it's talent over issues, I choose talent. So who's, whose issues is he choosing? Because this isn't, that's not talent. These people ain't talent, t- uh, talented. You can't convince me a Sukiana is talented. You can't convince me a Sexy Red is talented. You can't convince me a, a Cardi B a Megan is. That's not, they're not talented. Talented at what, being hoes? That's not talent. That's whoredom. That's debauchery. That's abomination. That's not talent. So what talent is he choosing over problems, our problems? Us killing our babies, us killing each other, us being high on opioids, us dying from uh, fentanyl. That's the problems he don't give. No, that he'll choose talent over our problems. Come on. You think that's hypocritical, though? You're saying um, the it's opportunistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I got I got people to feed. <laughs> um, oh, I got a bu- I got a I got a business to run. <laughs> You're gonna make Dame Dash take this right, clip and take call it you off the coach, screen. So his justification for killing our people is, I got people to feed. You know, I can't give up on people. You know who you know who sound like that? Them simple Negroes that be in the the project selling dope, talking about some. Yeah, I, I gotta feed my daughter. I gotta feed my kids. You sound just like the white man. That's who you sound like. Um, give me the next one. Give me the next video. Drink champs. Started at uh, one thirty-four. We going to two thirty. Listen to what Kanye said. We didn't. We didn't uh, play this before. We didn't heard this before. But it's something that he said that I want you to pay attention to. You got it. I mean, um, mm-hmm. I, I want to be careful with this subject because... Wait a second, but tell me, mm-hmm. could you even really run this interview? Because Mav yeah. didn't run my interview. Right. You know what I'm saying? They blocked me out. The Jewish media blocked me out. This shit lit, right? I'm lit, right? I'm lit. I'm not afraid. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of y'all no more. And we don't have to be afraid. I understand that they got us so paid off every which way they cut down. Stop. And my whole pause point it, just it. off the tweet, He's, the fact pause that... It, pause it. He said they got us paid off so much every which way. What are you talking about? They pay us to look like fools before. They pay us to push a certain image to our people. They pay us in every which way. I, I, uh, what's uh, the, the lady? Uh, Isla Van Zandt. I can't remember her name. She got a weird name. But she said that I think our women are out of order because they're paid to be out of order. She said the same thing Kanye just said. They pay us every which way to look and be out of order. Who are we talking about? The record execs. The movie uh, producers. 
They'll pay us top dollar to look like a damn buffoon on the television or to sound like a buffoon over the radio. Come on. What does that even mean, what I said? And the fact that I got taken off proves my point. Jamie Lee Curtis went on TV and said, I hope they take his children away from him. Lips. I got to tell you something. Where is a black guy that has a Jewish person signed Stop. to him? Stop. Pointed Stop. He said, where is a black guy that has a Jewish person signed to him? Where's the black guy that controls the Jewish image? Come on. Now, tell me that. Mm. Where is a black person that's signed to a Jewish person? Stop. Where's any black person that they are a talent agent or a producer for any Jewish person? Name one. They don't exist. You don't control anybody else's image. You don't control your image, and you don't control their image. But they control your image. You see that? You see how crazy that is? You see the blatant hypocrisy in that? You can't have anything to do with how they're portrayed, but they have everything to do with how you and your people are portrayed. So that they can feed their they family, they pay their bills. It's opportunistic. I choose talent over problems. Come on, man. Was that it? All right, drop that. Give me um, Deuteronomy 28 and 43. Because he said we're paid every which away. And we all signed to them. You got a Jewish lawyer, a Jewish record exec, a Jewish a uh, movie producer. You got all that. The, all that. That's, that's, that's all you. Now, one of them got a black anything except for client. That's all you are to them. Slave. Meal ticket. Something to leech off of. Something to, to uh, monetize. Uh, something to, uh, uh, what, uh, to exploit. Read what you got. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 43. Come on. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Come on. And thou shall come down very low. He just said it. You don't, you not signed to none of them. You don't pay the merry witch away to make a buffoon out of themselves. They don't, you don't control nothing about them. You know how we know that? Because no matter how much evil, I think um, uh, Captain Mattathias did a class yesterday where uh, some Jewish rabbi had 30 slaves, women as slaves, and he got off with, uh, what did he get off with? Community service, and he had to pay some money. When the hell you ever seen some, R, R. Kelly did the same thing. They threw his ass under the jail. Come on, man. And I'm not condoning R. Kelly at all, but I'm just showing you the blatant hypocrisy in it. Right. They went after him, and he had a harem. He had a bunch of sex slaves, a bunch of young sex slaves. And they threw him under, escaping R. Kelly. So what, they're surviving R. Kelly. Where's, a, where's surviving uh, whatever the hell his name is? Jamie Von Wootenstein or whatever the hell. We're surviving him. 30 dang women and slaves, and he get community service that he probably not going to do, and he got to pay some money. That's just, that's, they control their image. You can't touch them, no matter how evil they are. They get caught doing some of the most heinous crimes. They, they dig in tunnels under New York City with beds with baby. Uh, clothes and blood all over them, and nobody can do anything? Come on, man. Read that again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Come on. And thou shalt come down very low. Come on. He shall lend to thee. He pay you every which way. And thou shalt not, thou shalt not lend to him. And you will only be his client. Come on. He shall be the head. And thou shalt be the tail. You should be the head and you should be the tail. Uh, give me the next video, Oprah and Dave Chappelle.
All right, go ahead, play it. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting that dot. Like, why all these Stop. guys wear a dress? Stop. So why does he, he's asking a valid question. Why at every point in a black man's career, a prominent black person's career, because they don't do this to, you know, for the most part to, to like, bum actors or actors that, that don't bring in any money. They kind of just fall off and fade to black. But to any black man that's bringing in some money, that got a following, that has some clout, at some point in his career, they're going to put him in a dress. At some point, you can, you can bet your bottom dollar they didn't put him in a dress. Dave Chappelle put on a dress, for those who don't know. Yeah, he put on a dress. Kevin Hart done put on a dress. Big, big ass Ving Rains done put on a dress. Right. <laughs> you tell me that makes sense. Ving Rains about six foot damn two, 230 pound solid muscle. Big old dude put on a dress. Wesley Snipes done put on a dress. Uh, what's the, uh, Chris Tucker done put on a dress. Bro, I ain't even gonna get into the to the Tyrese most def. But some point in their career, you gonna put I'm a you gonna put on a dress. Some white boy gonna come up to you, right? Shaq, Larry Johnson, oh, uh, what, what, uh, what was the the Larry Johnson the grandmama? When you ever seen a, a a white basketball player play somebody damn grandma? Picture your your old ass grandma dunking on you. Come on, man. Come on, bro. And it's always a white man that, that presents us oh, going to be funny. He going to say it. Play it. This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. And, and look at Oprah. Stop it. Right and look at Oprah sitting up there looking like she don't know what's going on. Right. She, word? For real, though? What? Yeah, you know. You know. You're not, you're not up in those circles. She, she was kicking it with Harvey Weinstein for years. You mean to tell me you don't know what's going on? Play it. Writer comes in. I think he's a writer. He's like, Dave, listen. We got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> And not just dress now, hold on, on. Hold, and, and not just any woman, a prostitute. So you got to play a woman and a whore. Come on now, you got to play a whore woman, but you a whole man. Come on. Uh, huh? What? The prostitute? <laughs> nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. That, that should have been in the discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it? I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? You know, we're going like this. And then finally, he's like, ah. And he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave. It really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this? Uh, Brokeback Mountain in here? So <laughs> pause it. Pause it. So they're adamant about trying to make this man put on a dress. Like, like I, sometimes I get on my wife when, when she asks me something, and I give her an answer, and then she asks me again. I'm like, did I not say it the first time? Like, did I, did I not mean it? Like, that annoys me because I said what I said, right? So imagine a grown man has to keep telling another grown man, no, I'm not putting on the dress. And you're still persisting, but it's fun. I don't give a damn that it's funny to who? To, to you or me? Because it's not. I'm telling you it's not funny to me. I'm funnier than putting on a dress. I said no three, four times, and you're still trying to. Fun. That's how you know it's an agenda. That's how you know it's a, a, an agenda to destroy the image of the black man. When anybody's pushing that hard for you to do something that you don't want to do, that's, you, you know what? You know what? If, if that... That's, that's like raping a woman. Like she telling you no, and you force it upon her. That's what that, that, that's, they're spiritually raping 
these people, and physically, come on, put the dress on. Nah, I don't want to do it. Come on, it's going to be funny. Nah, I'm good. All right, man, you know, but you missing out on a great opportunity. All the greats have done it. Nah, I'm good. All right, I, I might not be able to get you, you know, a job in this town to get if you don't do it. That's how they do them. Right. No matter how many times you say no, they persist. They force it down your throat until you either break or, you know, you get blacklisted. You blackballed all day. You know, they're calling you crazy somewhere. You in Africa, they talking about you on crack and you, you crazy. Or you bitter or you hard to deal with because you won't put on a damn dress. Come on, man. Uh, finish it off. <laughs> Wear the, wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Man, the producers comes. Come on, David, would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right. Fine. Think of something else. That comes back ten minutes later. The whole new scene. How, damn! How did you write the scene so fast? You can go ahead and take it down. You know, it's like so, so. So, they have the audacity when you. First of all, they asked him a hundred times, and then when he says no forcefully, then they have the nerve to have an attitude. I ah, will do something else. Then I guess, and then come back ten minutes later with a whole. That's how you know. They got a, a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. This man doesn't come at you from one angle. He has multiple angles he comes at you with. He has a plan and a backup plan and a backup plan. The, the scriptures say his heart is deep. He is determined to destroy you. How is it you got a script, a whole new script in 10 minutes? Yeah, no, you been had that script. But that wasn't the point. You wanted to emasculate that man. You wanted to emasculate a man. You wanted to parade a man around in front of a bunch of young black boys, emasculated, effeminized, so that they can follow suit, so that they think nothing wrong with it. I'm going to show you. So we just saw, uh, saw Dave Chappelle go against it, even though he, he put on a dress for real. But he went against it. Now I'm going to show you what happens to, uh, to our people when they accept that behavior. Play the Marlon Wayans one. Now, this is the opposite side of the coin. Watch, watch what he says. You. What about the, you know, the black man putting on a dress conversation? You talk to a black man and put on a dress? Mm -hmm. I don't, I, stop, I, stop, stop, I, stop, stop. So they ask him, what, what's your thoughts on the, the black man putting on a dress thing? And he's, the first thing he says is, I'm a black man that put on a dress. Like he owned, like he, he gave no damn. And he's not, he not a little guy. He's a tall, big old black man. And I, yeah, I put on a dress. So what? What of it? Like it's not young black boys that, that look at you and, and want to be like you and, and trying to get where you got. They may do that same nonsense that you did and destroy their image. Keep playing. Conversation to me is, it's silly because it's a, it's a, it's a negative thing that is only in black people. Stop. We have for Stop. He said it's silly because it's only a negative thing for black people. No, Negro. It's a negative thing, period. It's a negative thing for God. What are you talking about? It's, it's, it's silly to talk about uh, or, or, or to, to have conversations about why a black man has to put on a dress in Hollywood because it's silly and it's only negative when black people do it. That's a that's a stupid argument. Play. Some reason been programmed to look down on the craziest parts about our experience that we're supposed to not embrace our past. Go not back. Embrace go our back, history. Go back, bro. Go back, bro. Go. I can't. I can't with this Negro, bro. Play it again. Embrace our past. He said, Not "Now go back a little history. further. Go back a little further. Go back about ten seconds. Play. To look down on 
the craziest parts about our experience that we're supposed to not embrace our past. Stop. Not embrace this our- nigga just said putting on a dress is a part of our past that we're supposed to embrace. What the who the hell says that? What what person in their right frame of mind encourages black men to put on a dress? But you know what? This is our culture. This is our heritage. A man being emasculated. You know, you know what that is? Slavery. In slavery, you were emasculated. That's your history. That's your past. That's your culture. You should embrace that. And these are your so-called leaders. This is who they parade in front of our children to say, be like him. He's successful. Run it back about five seconds. Play. His parts about our experience that we're supposed to not embrace our past, not embrace our history, not embrace our heroes, not embrace our different levels of comedy stop. that we have to stop. be stop not this embrace way. this this negro said not embrace our heroes who what black boy has a hero that's wearing a dress <clears throat> name one name name one black man that says my hero is that big old black man wearing a dress name me i ain't even going to say black people name me one white person that says my hero is that Big old white man in a dress. One Asian man that says, my hero wears a dress. One Arab man that says, my hero right there wears a dress. Why are why black people got to have heroes that put on a damn dress? How is black people's culture and history to be embraced and heroes, men putting on dresses? But go back. Go back about three, four seconds. Play. Embrace our different levels of comedy that we have to be this way. When Robin Williams puts on a dress and is Mrs. Doubtfire, he gets nominated for an Oscar and white people think it's brilliant. His community embraces him. When Dustin Hoffman puts on a dress in Tootsie and he wins an Oscar, he's labeled brilliant. When black people put on dresses, all of a sudden we're labeled by our own people like something negative. And I'm like, we did White Chicks. That's a classic movie. Mm -hmm. It's a classic. I don't care what nobody says. It's a classic. Everyone says it's a classic. That whole thing about, you know, you put on a dress and you selling out, that that is not an artist's mindset. When you're an artist. Stop. Stop. I, I can't no more with this Negro. All I heard was, I envied the white man. When the white man puts on a dress, he gets more money. He gets endorsements. He gets more famous. And his people embrace it. Duh, Negro. White people nasty as hell. God said you above all people. You a holy people. You ain't supposed to do what the white man do. The white man put on the dress. His people accept it because they dogs. They weird like that. You supposed to be a prince on the earth. You supposed to be a representation of God on earth. God said, re, uh, give, me, give me Proverbs 3 and 31 real quick. This why... Who cares if Robin Williams puts on a dress? Who cares if the white man put on a dress? God going to judge his behind. But you supposed to be God's son. You not supposed to do what he do. You supposed to do what God told you to do. That ain't your culture. That ain't your history. That ain't your heritage. That ain't your heroes. Read. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor. And choose none of his ways. God said don't envy the oppressor. The oppressor have you putting on a damn dress. Talk about white chicks was a, was a classic. To who, nigga? To who was white chicks a classic? That was one of the stupidest movies, period. It, it's full of homosexual innuendos. That's all it's, it's, it's pushing. It's pushing black men to be homosexual. And to worship the white man and the white woman. That's all it pushes. Tell me something other than that, that it pushes. Tell me something empowering to the black community that white chicks pushes. And I shut my mouth. Outside of you can get paid to make an ass of yourself. By playing not, not, just, not just any dress. You got to play. Not that's playing any woman. 
you got to play a white woman now. So it's not enough to put a black man in a dress. It's not enough to emasculate a, a black man. Now you have to play, have a black man play a white woman in a dress. You, you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Um, read that again. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Which, one of the, which way of God did he say you choose? Because he said when white people do it, they, they embrace. But when we do it, black people don't embrace it because it's not in us. It's not natural for us. You got the spirit of God in you. You're supposed to seek the things that are pleasing to God. That's why, naturally, black people as a whole don't accept that community like that. They don't. And if they do, they were either forced to because they lost something or, you know, they were shamed or bullied into accepting this thing that largely black people don't accept that stuff. Most black people do not like black men wearing dresses and, and the homosexual agenda and trans this and you know my son wants to grow up and be a, a spoon and my baby girl want to grow up and be a damn grass blade and then my nephew want to grow up and be a damn tablespoon and, and a grain of salt and everybody can grow up and be everything that they're not you oh, you can be anything but a, but an Israelite right you can be everything a big six foot five 200 something pound black man can be a white woman but you can't be the Israelites. That your image, you can't be that. But you can be your, your oppressor's image. Give me a, read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. That thing got my eye twitching, but that joint irritated me so bad. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. That's why. That's why, Marlon Wayans. Because God said a man should not put on a woman's garment. Come on. For all that do so, anybody that's putting on a woman's garment, read, or an abomination unto the Lord thy God. You are an abomination unto God, and God hates you. Yeah, I said God hates you. Because the scriptures say God hateth all about, get that real quick. God hates all abominations. It's in, uh, I want to say, Sirach 12. Yeah, Sirach 12. Is that it? Uh, yeah, yeah, get that, get that, get that. This, that the one I want. this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 44 and verse 4. Come on. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. What abominable thing? Men wearing dresses. He hates that. But you got coons like Dan Marlon Wayne sitting up here talking about that's our heritage. That's our past. We got to embrace it. Our heroes wore dresses. You sound like an idiot. You sound like a fool. Drop that. Sirach 10 and 9. This is, this is what Marlon Wayne's and people that embrace putting on a dress, this is what is set for them. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 10 and verse 9. Come on. Why is earth and ashes proud? The earth and ashes that is proudest. The Israelite man and woman, because we were made from the ashes, the dust of the ground. Why is earth and ashes proud? Why do they forsake the commandments of God? Come on. There is not a more wicked thing. Read that again. There is not a more wicked thing. There is not a more wicked thing. Read. Than a covetous man. Than a what? Than a covetous man. Was he not talking about covetousness? Why the white man can do it and he get awards and his community embraces him, his career takes off? It's nothing more wicked than a covetous man. Come on. For such as one set of his own soul to sell. He'll sell his soul for what? Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bios. He going to bend over for it. He going to put on a dress. He going to allow himself to be emasculated by his slave master. Because it's his culture. It's his history. He should embrace it. If you embrace that, you embrace a lot of things. I'll just leave it at that. Drop that. Give me uh, the Denzel Washington one. Now, Denzel Washington is in no wise a righteous man, but he does say and do some righteous things. Um, and and I, I really like this one, uh, this, this interview, because uh, he said something heavy. Go ahead, play it. In a movie in 1986, I called it the nigga they couldn't kill. Oh. Yeah, he was supposed to be, uh, 
He raped a white woman, and they, they, they tried to electrocute him, but it didn't work. They tried to hang him, and they tried to do all this stuff, and there were some uh, Jewish people in the, in the, in the audition, and, and I said, yeah, they said, no, it's funny, it's like they hang him, and then they can't. I said, yeah, like, you bring some Jewish people into a room, and, you, and you, they think it's a shower, but it's gas. Oh. And they said, right. I said, right, that ain't funny. So to me, it wasn't funny about putting a rope around my MF and neck. Right. I made a point. The run it, run, it, run it back. Real quick. Play it one more time. Play it back one time. I, I want you to listen to the to the crowd's reaction when he's telling the story. David and I guarantee that he should die. Take it off the screen. Just put it back up. Take it off. There we go. Right, put it back up. Because I want you to listen to the crowd when he's describing what they're trying to make him do. All you hear is laughter. But as soon as he cracks his joke about Amalek, the so-called Ishman, you hear the crowd, oh, like, oh, no, you went too far. But it's funny when they, they crack jokes on us and joke about our destruction. It's not funny if I tell a joke about their destruction, showing you what? Their hypocrisy, their image is precious, and your image is uh, fair game. Play it again. Watch. Listen carefully. Got a part in a movie in 1986. I called it the nigga they couldn't kill. Oh. Yeah, it was, he was supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> He raped a white woman, and they, they, they tried to electrocute him, but it didn't work. They tried to hang him, and they tried to do all this stuff, and there were some uh, Jewish people in the, in the, in the audition, and, and I said, yeah, they said, no, it's funny, it's like they hang him, and then they can't. I said, yeah, like, you bring some Jewish people into a room, and you, and you, you they think it's a shower, but it's gas. Oh. And they said, right. You heard him? I said, right, that you heard funny. Him? So to Soon me, as he said that, boy, you can take it off. Soon as he said that thing about that, the ish people, they, oh. But they weren't like that when they talking, and I guarantee you it was plenty of black people in that audience. And probably some white ones too. And probably some, some Amalekites in there too. But soon as he said what he said about the missions, oh. But it's, oh, it's fair game to talk about the destruction of your people. You can't make this stuff up. You can't tell me this Bible ain't talking about us. Who else get get who else is so easily um able to to be destroyed and cast down and 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 humiliated publicly publicly and all shout out to shout out to the brother all praises for for not falling for that nonsense and tell I'm not doing it and you know why I'm not doing it cuz it wouldn't be funny to make fun of something that happened to you bad Nobody going to sit up there and laugh about the Holocaust, but everybody sits up there and laughs, laughs about chattel slavery. Everybody laughs about what happened to us. You see all manner of satire and, and everything about our slavery. Nobody makes satire about the so-called Jewish Holocaust. Nobody dare do that. To do that is, oh, it's anti-Semitic. But you can joke about our oppression and our slavery. Damn, Vocab Malone cracked jokes talking about he's going to do a, a spoof called Slavery in the USA. I bet you he won't say, oh, I'm going to do a spoof called Holocaust in the USA. I bet you he won't do that. But he got the audacity to be, be spending his time on us. Go deal with the Christian church. You, you believe in Jesus? Go deal with them, them issues that don't believe in Jesus. Go deal with them. Why are you focused? We believe in Jesus. We care about our people. We're cleaning up our community. Go deal with the people that's destroying people. Go deal with the Jewish rabbi that set up there and had 30 sex slaves and got community service and a fine. Go deal with the damn rabbis that built tunnels that got baby clothes and blood on mattresses and baby toys. Go deal with them. Go deal with the, the, the Catholic church that's raping children like it's going out of style. Go deal with them. Go deal with the gang members and the, 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 the women that's killing 20 million of their babies, go talk to them. Leave us the hell alone. We trying to fix the, our image. You trying to help destroy our image. Leave us the hell alone. Uh, 
Give me Ecclesiastes 10 and 6. This is, this is why they, don't, they hate what Denzel Washington said and love what Marlon Wayne said. Ten and six, go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10 and verse 6. More. Folly is set in great dignity. Read that again. Folly is set in great dignity. This is why Marlon Wayne's can sit up there and talk about wearing a dress and say, I wear history. We should embrace it because folly is set in great dignity. By who? Your oppressor. Folly is set in, is highly esteemed. It's to be embraced. It's to be celebrated. This is why black women being single, women, single mothers, is celebrated. It's celebrated to be a single mom to you, not, not to them. That's, that's terrible to them. You messed up if you wanted theirs and you a single mom. But with us, so you, you go girl and you strong, black, and independent, and you a balls bee, and it's celebrated. Everything destructive is celebrated. Young Thug is celebrated until he catch a Rico. Uh, who else? You know, uh, Dave, Dave Chappelle is celebrated, or Kevin Hart is celebrated when he's putting on a dress. But, you know, if he turns down a dress, then he's crazy and, you know, he's smoking crack. Read it again. Folly is set in great dignity. Come on. And the rich sit in low place. And the rich sit in low place. We the rich that's sitting in low place. And we accept folly. We try to esteem folly and sin as dignified, as astute, as um, uh, what, what the, uh, what, what the uh, uh, divine. Drop that. Luke 16 and 14. We almost the book it. of Luke, chapter 16, and verse 14. Come on. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. So I said the Pharisees also who were covetous, right? Now, the Christian church is that today. And they all they do is push covetousness, right? They said they derided him. Why? Come on. And he said it to them. Yea. Are they which justify yourselves ye, before men? Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, like Marlon Wayne's justified himself before men. Come on. But God knoweth your hearts. But God knows your hearts. Read. For that which is highly esteemed among men. Read that again. For that which is highly esteemed among men. Come on. Is an abomination in the sight of God. Everything that is pushed to us that we esteem as great and to be honored and to be respected, God hates. It's abomination to him. It does nothing to benefit our people. It does nothing to uplift lift our community. It does nothing to save our little black boys and our little black girls from being murdered, being raped, being missing, um, having their organs taken from them, becoming someone's sex slave, being raised in a single-parent home, going hungry, having not a roof over their head. None of this stuff that we esteem as great does anything to solve none of those problems. And those are very real problems in the black community. Nobody in the black community is worrying about, I wonder when somebody is going to come and offer me a dress. They worried about when I'm going to get my next meal or where my father at or why my mama want to hang out in the street more than she want to sit up here and raise me. Those are the problems that's in our community. Or why everybody outside shooting at each other. Why I can't even go outside and ride my bike without bullets whizzing past my head. Those are things that our community worry about. Not whether I should embrace putting on a dress. Read it again. Verse four, uh, 15. Verse 15. And he said it to them. Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. Uh -huh. For that which is highly esteemed among men. Is an abomination in the sight of God. Show those images. Let's show some, some things that's highly esteemed today, but are abomination in the sight of God. Show those images. So we got gangs, right? Crips and Bloods, two of the most notable ones. That's your image. That's what they want you to be. They want you to, to tote pistols. Wear colors and kill each other over, 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 over colors and some territory. Go back, go back. Over some territory that you don't know. What was the next one? Can we make that bigger? As little as a mug. 
So that's my man, Young Thug, who got here with the Rico. And, and he looked like a whole Pepto Bismol, bro. Yeah, he looked he look like a Pepto Bismol, bro. He looked like a like a whole Pepto Bismol. That's a whole man. Dressed in all pink, wearing little tight pants and pink hair. That's a man. That's highly esteemed. That Negro need to be in jail. The hell with the Rico. They needed to put him in jail for that. Give him 20 to 25 years for dressing like a whole Pepto Bismol. Give me the next one. This is everybody's favorite one. Make it larger. What's her name? Ugly red. I'm not. I'm not calling her sexy. Ain't nothing sexy about her. Uh, trashy red. Ratchet red. That's highly esteemed. Next one. That's another one. Uh, Suki Hana. Miss Eden in in London. Get her coochie stretch in London. That's highly esteemed. That's what they want our sisters to be like. That's who our babies need to grow up and be. That's who our baby girls should grow up and esteem and aspire to be like. And it's destroying the community, and nobody get, nobody cares. A talent over problems. Come on. There you go again. This is what I was talking about earlier. Look, look zoom in on them dang baby hairs, bro. Is them baby hairs or them tattoos? Zoom in on them baby hairs, bro. What in the hell is this, bro? What is this? You can't tell me somebody thinks that's attractive. Well, I, I, you can't even say that because it's a Negro out there that she, she said, I, I'm trying to eat an ad and get her coochie stretched in London. I'm pretty sure she was successful in her endeavor because uh, screw with the scripture, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. So somebody thinks that's, that's beauty. But God says that is abomination. That is abominable. Take that off the screen. What's the next one? That's it? All right, let's get some real images, man. Give me the, the first video. Let's, let's get us. Let's get our people, man. This is what they're afraid of. This is why it's so important for you to take back your image, black man, black woman. Take your image back. Stop giving them the ability to control your narrative and control your story. You control your narrative. You control what goes out there about you. Uh, go ahead and play the first one. Talking about how are these men calling themselves the sons of God? Where were the questions when they were putting us on slave ships? Where were the questions when they raped our daughters, our mothers, our sisters, our brothers? We can't live in certain neighborhoods. So we're giving y'all your separation as we create a new nation. Marveling, excited. It was people out there crying for what they saw. Because all they see is the Sukiyanas, the Ugly Reds, the, the dang Ratchet Steves, the damn, who else? The Young Thugs. That's all they see. So when they see thousands of black men marching through, through the neighborhood, one of the worst neighborhoods in Baltimore, in order, it brought tears to their eyes. Why? Because our people need a righteous image. We, our people need us to take our image back. They waiting for us to take our image back. Uh, give me uh, Romans 8 real quick. I think that's what I want. Uh, let me make sure. Let me make sure that's what I want. Uh, Da, 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 da. Verse 19. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 19. Come on. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's what the world is waiting on. 
The world is waiting for the black man to stand up and claim his image back. They're waiting for us to manifest our true image, the image of the sons and daughters of the living God. That's what they're waiting for us to manifest. They waiting on us. The whole world waiting on us. And we still sitting up here letting uh, our oppressor and, and people who hate us push our image? When the whole world waiting on us? Come on, man. Play the next one. We will work with anybody and form coalition with anybody that has revolution on their mind. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can feel my said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolutionary. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. We want freedom by any means necessary. We want justice by any means necessary. This is a revolution of justice. This time we're living in, the greatest revolution of the world. Only lives will be shot in the earth. That's power. That's what we need. That's what our people need. That's what we need. Play, play the last video because we uh we run out of time. We almost done. Play the last one, the one with the sisters. Because we, we love the sisters too, man. And we want to show the people that we got the sisters in order too. It ain't just the men. This ain't just a men's movement. The men at the forefront of it, we leading it. But the sisters in line too. The sisters taking back their image too. Ain't no more, ain't no Sukianas and, and, and Ratchet Reds and, and amongst us. You got to get the hell out. Moving like that in here, the sisters in order. Play the uh, the the last one. Shout out to uh, IUIC Baltimore. These you take it up. These is mothers, daughters. These people that done cleaned their life up. These people that, that they might have been out there moving like, like uh, a, a Ratchet Red or, or Sukiana. And, they, and God done cleaned them up. They sitting up there reading and teaching their babies the Bible, teaching each other the Bible. You can't tell me it ain't no power in this book. You can't tell me this ain't the solution to cleaning up our image. Not, the, not rap music. Not the movies. This Bible. The laws of God. Um, Psalms 50 and 19 through 21. We got a few more scriptures, then we're done. Psalms 50 and 19. Read quick. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 19. Come on. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. This man gave his whole mouth to framing us by deceit. Gave his whole mouth to evil and destroying our image. Come on. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Uh -huh. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Because that's, that's the twin brother. That's, that's Esau. That's the devil. Come on. These things have thou done, and I kept silence. God kept silent. He ain't saying nothing. He just let it happen. He let it slide for a time. Come on. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. He thought God was cool with it. He thought God was cool with him calling himself the Jews. 
He thought God was cool with him destroying the apple of his eye, his sons and his daughters. Come on. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. And that's what you see with our brothers and our sisters. God setting them in order before the eyes of the people that oppressed us. And they hate it. They just spent trillions of dollars to destroy your image, to control what you look like in the media. And the Israelites destroying it in a moment. It took them hundreds of years to destroy it. And we, we cleaning it up in moments, seconds. Uh, drop that. Daniel 7 and uh, 18. We got to take back our image. It's on us. You can't wait for the other nations to give you your, respectfully, Mr. White Man, can you please portray us as something positive? If they, if they portray you as anything positive, it's probably going to be two gay men raising a baby. That's what they'll call positive. But that's not positive. That's not conducive to life. We got to take our image. We got to push the positive image. They're not going to do it. It's not in them to. They're not going to do it. They're confederate against us. They don't want to push it. They only invested in your destruction. Read what you got. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 18. Come on. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Shall what? Shall take the kingdom. That's not, that's, that's not nice. That's not begging nobody. That's not asking for a damn thing. The scriptures say the saints are going to read it again. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. The scriptures say we're going to take the kingdom. We're going to seize the kingdom from our oppressors by force. That's what's going to happen. We're going to take it from them. We're going to snatch our image back from them. We're not asking. I don't need your permission. I don't need your permission to have my wife put on a dress. I don't need your permission to teach my son how to work with his hands, how to read, how to control his emotions, how to solve his problems without becoming violent. I don't need you, Mr. White Man. I got it. God got me. We okay. We don't need you. We going to take out and we going to control our destiny and our story which is written in this Bible. Read. And possess the kingdom forever. And we're going to possess the kingdom forever. You ain't never getting it back. You ain't never prying that out of my hands ever again. Come on. Was that it? No, sir. All right. Even Luke, forever and never. Even forever and never. Uh, Luke 17, 20. This is the book of Luke. Chapter 17 and verse 20. Come on. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So if we keep waiting on the white man and the Jewish man and, you know, the Chinese man and the Arab man to do anything positive to you, we're we going to be here another 400 years. We can't just sit and watch and wait. We got to do something. We got to get up. We got to stop being lazy. We got to push. We got to fight. We got to grind. We got to dig in. We got to get rooted. We got to move. We go out to camp. We tell brothers, teach like you about to get put to death today. Like it will be your last day teaching and it's all for this for all the marbles. Teach like that. We ought to move with everything. That, this for all the marbles. Teach your sons and your daughters like it's for all the marbles. Like today is the last day you could teach your son and your daughter anything. Talk, teach your wife like this is the last day you could teach her anything. Wives, respect, reverence your husbands like this is the last day. Like he could go out there tomorrow and you never see him again. Read. Neither shall thou shall say, low here or low there. Uh -huh. For behold. The kingdom of God is within you. It's in you to take. You got to take it. You got to take it. You got to take it. You got to fight for it. They're not going to give it to you. Point blank, that, that why you think God called us his battle axe? We got to fight to take back what's ours. They fought to take it from us. They fought tooth and nail to make sure we were destroyed. Shall we not fight them back and take it? And we got God on our side? We got a weapon of mass destruction. If there was ever a weapon of mass destruction. Drop that last scripture. Isaiah 1, 24. We're reading through 26. So the point is, who controls the black image? We control the black image, the Israelite image. Not the white man, not the Jewish man, not the Chinese man. 
We control our image. Why? Because God gave us his law, statutes, and commandments and made us in the image of God after his likeness. You are the only people on the planet that were made to look like God and be like God. You are the only people on the planet that are an image of his eternity, of his immortality. You are. You got to claim it and take it. You got to believe it. They're not going to do it for it. They believe it. That's why they work so hard to keep it from you. You got to take it. Read what you got. Isaiah 124. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 24. Come on. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Come on. Oh, I will ease of my adversaries. I will ease me of my adversaries. Read. And avenge me of my enemies. And he going to avenge himself of his enemies, which are our enemies. That sounds good to me. That make my teeth white. That make my, 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 my hair stand on in. Come on. And I will turn my hand upon thee. He will turn his hand upon us. And purely purge away thy dross. And take away all our evil from us. Come on. And take away all thy tent. Everything. Every little drop. Read. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. Read that again. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. He's going to restore our image as it was at the first when we were the superpower in all the earth. He's going to restore our image. We control our, he waiting on us. God waiting on us. So he can restore our image. Come on. And thy counselors as at the beginning. Come on. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness. After that, when we get our act together and the Lord puts everything under his feet, then we're going to be known as what? The city of righteousness. Then we're going to be known as the city of righteousness. Come on. The faithful city. The faithful city. All right. So. You know, take back your image, black man, black woman. Uh, happy new moon. Um, you know, make sure to subscribe to IUIC Virginia and IUIC Virginia in the classroom. I'm Officer Yosef. Shalom, most high and Christ bless you.